It's a Sunday night, and your family has all gone to bed. You let the dogs back in and lock the deadbolt like you do every night. All of the lights are now off except for a couple of night lights scattered throughout the house, leaving that dim glow through your home. It's bedtime, and work and school are going to come early in the morning. You crawl back in bed, kiss your wife goodnight, and drift off to sleep, being thankful for the air conditioning that allows you to pull that heavy quilt up over your shoulders, despite the fact it's still 90 degrees outside. A few hours pass. a.m. Monday morning and your wife taps your leg says baby I think I heard something outside as you sit up in bed you hear the dog growling in the living room and you know something just isn't right you grab that trusty old 870 and head into the living room your wife grabs her 9 millimeter and heads down the hall to the kids room just like you have rehearsed in the past good boy as you say entering the living room patting the dog on the head just as that happens, splinters fly across the room and the front door flies open. You shoulder that shotgun and send a load of double hot buck across the living room and to see a perpetrator fall in a heap. <sighs> Thank God. And then all of a sudden you see a second man coming in the door and you fire again. This time you hear a pop of your wife's 9mm as she has joined the fight. It has to be one of those damn meth heads from downtown, you thought. Just then you are consumed by a wall of bullets as you see multiple muzzle flashes from just outside the door and you realize something isn't right. You turn to your wife and yell, get down, just in time to see her take a load of buckshot to the face and her brain matter splatter on the wall behind her. You feel the burning of 5.56 bullets riddle your body. One clips your spine as you're scrambling away, paralyzed from the waist down. The last thing you see before you bleed out and die is a SWAT guy from your local PD holding your teenage daughter on the floor with a knee in her back as she screams and cries because she just watched her parents being murdered. Why did this happen? You're no criminal. You're a conservative and an honest family man. Your wife is a school teacher and your daughters are on the honor roll. Why did this happen? Well, two days ago, you and your wife went down to welcome the new neighbors to the community. Your wife made them some of her world-famous cookies, and you invited them to church on Sunday. Later that afternoon, you got a friend request from your new neighbor on Facebook, which you gladly accepted. They seemed a little odd, but in the few minutes you talked to them, they were pleasant enough. The next day, while you and your family sat in church, your new neighbor scrolled through your Facebook profile, and he saw Trump 2020 and got infuriated. See, he's a staunch liberal, and he hates your kind. The next thing he sees are the hunting pictures you took last fall when your daughter bagged her first buck. Now he is seething with fury because he is wholeheartedly against the slaughter of innocent animals. Next, he sees your post from last year's range day with your buddy and saw those scary black assault weapons that you're using. He now has it in his head that he has to do something about this racist, domestic terrorist living next door. He picks up the phone, calls the local sheriff's office, and reports you as a threat under the new red flag laws. The sheriff's office follows their standard operating procedures and conducts a no-knock warrant because you have been denied due process and you are considered guilty until proven innocent. Now, you, your lovely wife, and two deputies have been killed for nothing. Your daughter will have absolute hell for the rest of her life. She will never be that successful person you dreamed for her to be because of the mental tragedy caused from seeing her parents murdered in the middle of the night. The local newspaper will report that you were killed after firing on and killing two deputies and that over a thousand rounds of ammo and 22 guns were confiscated from your residence. Oh, and those two deputies, they were just following orders. They also left behind two families and have served their community for over a decade. They didn't know you were a stand-up guy with a great family. They weren't allowed the time to investigate things under due process. They were told that you were a threat to the community and had an AR-15 rifle. 
This is the reality of red flag gun laws. This is the reality of the hysteria that the mainstream media has built around guns. No matter what you think the good that could come from a red flag gun law, know that it will be abused, know that it will be misused, and know that it will cause tragedies just like this.